All right, now we get to the fun part, the trig functions. But before that, something real fast. Suppose that you have a triangle and it's a right triangle. Suppose that these two sides are three and four. And now I need to find this side. So when you go across from this right angle, this side over here is called the hypotenuse. And this is called a leg, and this is called a leg. And then, I'm sure that you've seen the Pythagorean theorem before, that would say that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the square of each leg, and then you add those two squares together. So in this case, c squared will be a nine plus a 16, Pretty sure I could do that without a calculator. C squared is equal to 25. Take the square to both sides, so C is equal to five. So this creates what's called a Pythagorean triple when you have whole numbers as the three sides of a right triangle, like three, four, and five. Now suppose that I could like on my iPhone take this and just make it bigger. So zoom out like this and make it bigger. So I could make it twice as big. Now if I make it twice as big, that does not change this angle. So this angle will just get moved out until it becomes down here. This angle would move up until it becomes over here and this 90 would not change. But if I make it twice as big, then the sides would be 6, 8, and 10. And then the Pythagorean theorem still works. So 10 squared, does that equal 6 squared plus 8 squared? This would be 100. This is 36 plus 64. And 36 plus 64 definitely equals 100. Now the idea with trigonometry is, even if we don't know what this angle is, it's gonna be the same angle whether you use the small version of the triangle or the big version of the triangle. And if you pick any two sides, like I'll pick this side and this side. Well, that corresponds to this side and this side. And if you divide these two, and I'm gonna go in the order, the leg divided by the hypotenuse. Over here, you go in the same order, the leg divided by the hypotenuse. And if you were to reduce this fraction, divide by two is four, divide by two is five, then those fractions are the same. That is the basis of the trig functions because what they do is, they divide two sides. And if this angle is the same, theta and theta, then even at the beginning, the, fra the fractions don't look the same. You reduce them, they are actually the same. So trigonometry is all about dividing the two sides of a triangle. Now on to the actual definitions of the trig functions. So the first three trig functions are called sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, of course, it takes a lot of work to write out this whole word tangent, or cosine, or even sine. So instead, you just use the first three letters. So that looks like sin, but we pronounce it sine. And we pronounce this cosine and we pronounce this tangent. And then you need to put the angle in here to say what angle you're talking about. So sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Now, if you have any old right triangle, and for the first two thirds of the semester, we're gonna be working with right triangles over and over and over again. You can do trigonometry with 
obtuse triangles and acute triangles, but we'll do that later. Now, suppose that this is the angle theta, so this is the theta that's being talked about. Now this part is extremely important. So you go from the angle theta, you go straight across from it, and this side is called the opposite side. If you go across from the 90 degrees, that is the hypotenuse. And then if you go right next to theta, right here, well, the word adjacent means next to. If my house is adjacent to a highway, it means it's next to a highway. So, next up, how do you set up the fractions? So sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's extremely important that you get this down, understand it, and remember it. Because we're going to use it over and over and over again. So this is very much like if this was a foreign language class. These right here including these, are the basic words. And if you don't know the basic words, then it's very difficult to create sentences and get people to understand you. So personally, what I use, and this is what Mr. Bellman taught me back in 1984, Oscar had a heap of apples. So even when I was writing this down in red, and I was saying opposite over hypotenuse, well, in my brain, in my head, I was saying Oscar had a heap of apples. Some people use SOHCAHTOA, so capital S for sign, and then OH for opposite of hypotenuse, so, and then ka toa So whether you use SOHCAHTOA or Oscar had a heap of apples, that's how it's set up. So whatever would be right here, you put opposite over hypotenuse. And I'll do an example in just a moment, but I just need to do the last three trig functions. So if you go straight across from sine, and then you put cosecant, you go across from cosine and put secant, and if you go straight across from tangent, put cotangent. So these are also fractions. And the reason that I do this across thing is because if you know these three, then you know these three. Because these three are just the reciprocal. So for sine, it's O divided by H. For cosecant, it's H divided by O. And for cosine, it would be h divided by a. And then for cotangent, it would be a divided by o. Now for an example that puts all of that together. Suppose that the angle theta is 30 degrees. So for theta equal 30 degrees, find all six trig functions. Okay, so it has to be that we're dealing with a right triangle and then one angle is 30 degrees. Now, the three angles have to add up to 180. 
Since this is already 90, that means this one and this one have to add up to 90, which means that this is a 60 degree angle. Then, if you go across from 30, this side would be 1. If you go across from 60, this side will be the square root of 3. And if you go across from 90, this side would be 2. So if you just, I'm just going to use scratch paper right now because it's not really part of this, but I just want to show you. If you check this and see if it's right by using the Pythagorean theorem, it would say 2 squared equals 1 squared plus radical 3 squared. Let's see if that's true. This would be 4, this would be 1, and when you square radical 3, you get just a 3. And then it says 4 equals 3 plus 1. That's true. Okay, now set up the six trig functions. So I always begin with sine, cosine, tangent. And you might want to have this like on a little piece of paper or something like that because we're going to use it over and over again. Eventually you'll have it memorized, but at the beginning you may want to have a little piece of paper or three by five card or something like that. So I use Oscar had a heap of apples. So this is going to be 30 degrees. So we're talking about theta is 30 degrees. So from 30 degrees, you have to go opposite, and this is the opposite side. If you go across from the 90, that is the hypotenuse. And if you go right next to the 30, that is adjacent. So in this case, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over 2. Adjacent over hypotenuse would be the square root of 3 over 2. And opposite over adjacent would be 1 over the square root of 3. Now go straight across from these three, and across from sine goes cosecant. And it's the reciprocal, so it's going to be 2 over 1, or just 2. Across from cosine is secant, and it would be the reciprocal, so 2 over the square root of 3. And across from tangent will be cotangent, and the reciprocal would be square root of 3 over 1. Now that one's actually done, but I want to use the calculator and check and see are these correct. So I need this to move over a little bit. Thank you very much. Hopefully there's not a bad glare on the calculator. Now when dealing with the calculator, you need to pay attention because there's two ways to measure angles. So far we've only used degree, so this needs to say degree. If it doesn't, change the mode. So go to the mode, and then right here are the two ways to measure angles. Hold on, I hit the wrong button. There's radians, and then there's degrees. So put the highlighter on it, the cursor, hit enter. Now it's in degrees. Next, put second, quit. Okay, so what is sine if the theta is 30 degrees? So you just put sine... 30, and because it's in degrees, you don't have to put the little circle. The calculator understands that it's in degrees, and it equals a half. That part's right, 0.5 or a half. Now this one, the calculator is going to give me a decimal, so I'm first going to find out what's the square root of 3 divided by 2. That's the decimal. And what's cosine of 30 degrees? Yep, it's the same. And for tangent, that is 1 divided by the square root of 3. And if you do tangent of 30 degrees, yep, that's the same. Now, notice that the calculator only has sine and cosine and tangent. So for these, 
You just have to use the reciprocal and trust that you did that part right. And anytime, let's say we only had this one and we were gonna use the calculator, then we would need to switch, use the reciprocal of cosine. Next example. Without a calculator, find cosine of 225 degrees. Well, hopefully right now your brain is saying, wait, he said we could only use right triangles. And I'm saying, good job, brain, you're right. So here's the xy axis. When you measure angles with the xy axis, you always start at the positive x axis. So you start with the positive x axis and you go this direction. By the time you get to here, that's going to be 90 degrees. By the time you get to here, that's going to be 180. And by the time you get to here, that's 270. So this is 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, and 270. And if you kept going back to here, you'd be back to 0, or in other words, 360 degrees, one time around a circle. So 225, well, it's got to be between these two. So that means that going from here to here, that whole thing is 225 degrees. And we need a right triangle. So what you do is just make this line perpendicular to the x-axis and we now have a right triangle. But how much is this angle right here in the triangle itself? So not the whole red part, but just this part right here. Well, since the whole red thing is 225, and from here to there is 180, this must be 225 minus 180. 225 minus 180 is 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees. Now these two angles have to add up to 90 degrees because that one's already 90. So if these two are 90, that means this one must be 45. So we have what's called a 45-45-90 triangle. I'm just going to take it out and stand it upright. So this is 45, and this is 45. Now when two angles are the same, then the sides opposite them will also be the same. Since they have to be the same, you can put whatever number you want. 37 and 37, or to keep things simple, a 1 and a 1. And then if you do the Pythagorean theorem, this side's going to be the square root of 2. So in example one, I use 30, 60, 90. In here, 45, 45, 90. Those two triangles show up a lot. Okay, then find out what's cosine. Cosine of 45 degrees. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to equal 1 over the square root of 2. Now you might be thinking, well that's cute, nice little trick, but you forgot that the problem said cosine of 225. Well that's okay because the answer for cosine of 225 will equal the same number, but it might be that this one is exactly the same, that they're both positive, or it might be that this one is supposed to be negative. But as far as the fraction, it will be the same. Now, the way to figure out, is it supposed to be a positive or a negative? We use this idea. 
A S T C. And this little picture right here tells you when are the answers supposed to be positive. So if you're in the first quadrant, all trig functions are positive. If you're in the second quadrant, then sine will be positive, which means cosine is negative and tangent is negative. If you're in the third quadrant, then tangent is positive and cosine and sine are negative. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive, but sine and tangent are negative. Since this one, 225, ended up in the third quadrant, that means we're talking about this. So if we had tangent, the answer should be positive. But because we have cosine, the answer should be negative. And now, check it with the calculator. And I'm going to check all of this. Okay, so for 1, what does 1 divided by the square root of 2 equal? It equals this decimal 0 0.707. Now, did I get this part right? Cosine of 45, does it equal a 0 0.707? Excellent, yes it does. And cosine of 225, then I should get the same number, 0 0.707, but I should get negative. Perfect. All right, that's example number two. For example number three, find out what cosine equals if tangent is equal to negative four thirds. And the angle theta is in quadrant 2. So using A, S, T, C. So again, this is another little thing that's good to remember. And the way that I remember it is I just say the sentence A, smart trig class. Oh, I guess that's not a sentence. It doesn't have a verb. I say this, the four words saying A, smart trig class. And then that tells you when the functions are positive. Well, let's see. If tangent is equal to negative 4 thirds and we're in quadrant 2, so that means that sine is supposed to be positive, but tangent is supposed to be negative. Also, cosine will be negative because it's sine that's positive here. But how do you figure out what the triangle is? So this is going to be the theta, which means that if you go across from it, this is the opposite side. Right next to it is the adjacent side. Across from 90 is the hypotenuse. Well, according to the definitions, hold on, I'm getting my little memory card back, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so that means somebody made this fraction by putting opposite over adjacent. And for the moment, ignore the negative because this little picture right here will help us out with positives and negatives. We just need the numbers. So opposite is a four, adjacent is a three. And if this side is 3 and this side is 4, that's the one we did the Pythagorean theorem with before, and we found out that this side is 5. So 3, 4, and 5 go together on a right triangle. Now find out what cosine equals. So cosine of theta is equal to, that is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means that it's 3 over 5. The last part is figure out if it's supposed to be positive or negative. So in this quadrant, quadrant two, sine is positive. That means cosine is negative. 
So that one is done. Then example number four. So find out what sine of theta equals. If the angle theta has the point 12 comma negative 5 on its terminal side. First of all, where it's 12, so let's say this could be 12 for x, this would be negative 5 for y, so it's saying that this is the angle, or this is the terminal side of the angle. And, as I may have mentioned before, when you measure angles with the x and y coordinate system, you start on the positive x-axis, and then you go around like this. And once again, using a smart trig class, if you're in quadrant 4, then the answer for cosine will be positive, but the answer for sine will be negative. Now, how do you actually find what the sides are so we can set up sine? Well, if you look at this triangle, it goes across like this, so that's this side right here is 12, and then it goes down by 5. And for now, I'm just going to ignore the negative because this thing over here is going to help me with figuring out if it's positive or negative. And so that would be like dropping a line like this that's perpendicular. And then we have a triangle. So the first thing to do is find out, because we're using the Pythagorean theorem, what's this side right here? So let's call it C. And then C squared equals 5 squared plus 12 squared. So that would be 25 plus 144, which is 169. Just so happens you can take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 169 is a 13. Now whenever you use this idea, the angle theta needs to be touching the x-axis. So it needs to be this little angle right here that's touching the terminal side and the x-axis. So that is that theta is right here. Now in the two or three previous examples, I had always set up the triangle so that the theta was right here. And then this is opposite, this is adjacent, and this is hypotenuse. But if you turn the triangle in some different direction, then that's going to change where the words opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse go. So to make sure that it's correct, I always start with the angle itself and go across from the angle, and that has to be the opposite side. I then go across from the 90, and that has to be the hypotenuse. And if that's the opposite and that's the hypotenuse, then this is called the adjacent. All right, almost done. So sine of theta is equal to Oscar had opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is 5. The hypotenuse is 13. And then the last thing is, because it's in quadrant 4, that means cosine is positive. That means sine equals a negative. All right, we're done with this section.